What the heck was that about? Was it written by Ralph from The Simpsons? Hang on, hang on. What, what are people saying about it? Oh gosh, this can only mean one thing. Apologies to Cinema Sins, but. Do, 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 do. Everything mostly wrong with Planet of the Humans. Okay, okay, enough with the sad music. Let's count the number of errors. When I grew up, I became a tree hugger and moved to the wilds of northern Michigan to build a sustainable homestead and commune with nature. Man, this should be great. This guy's been doing this sort of stuff for years. Through all of this, I kept wondering, why are we still addicted to fossil fuels? Excellent question. And, geez, it'd be awesome if you can answer that. So I decided to begin following the green energy movement um, didn't you just say you've been following this stuff for many years? So the festival's run off solar energy primarily? Primarily. Um, we need to bring some of this stuff in just because uh, we want to make sure we have enough power to kill our uh, fancy toys that we're inviting the stage. Wait, so some fool foolishly said that they're going to run a festival purely on solar and not have some backup? But the biofuel generator wasn't enough, so they wound up plugging into the electrical grid that we all use. So if the grid is almost 100% renewably powered and is carbon offset, what's the problem then? Green activists across the country cheered when newly elected President Barack Obama rolled out a trillion dollar stimulus package with nearly $100 billion for green energy. Wow, $100 billion on green energy? Shame the United States subsidized the fossil fuel industry to the tune of $649 billion per year. Is Al Gore a prophet? <laughs> um, uh, I just spelled profit. <laughs> so by including this, you're trying to argue what now? <laughs> so what's charging the, the batteries right now? What, where, where, what's the source of a... Well, like here. It's, it's coming from the building. I mean, is it... Um, what's our mix of power? Ooh, awkward. Classic gotcha moment. Yeah, she doesn't even know what the energy mix is from the grid. Is this going to be a problem? Oh, actually, Lansing feeds the building. What's that? Lansing feeds power to the building. So I don't, I don't know. They're, uh... I bet you they're a bit of coal. Well, they're heavy on natural gas, aren't they? No. Natural gas is a fossil fuel. Uh, right now the car is charging off of your grid. Right. It would be charging off uh, our grid, which is 90, about 95% coal. What Gibbs is doing here is he's trying to paint electric vehicles as being no better than conventional internal combustion engine vehicles. This is where he should be fading to black and saying something dramatic like, it doesn't matter if the electric vehicle is being charged by 95% coal, because even if it was 100% coal, emissions would be 18% less than a comparable vehicle, and CO2, PM2.5, and many other particulate matter that causes lung disease, asthma, premature death, and more will be far less prevalent. In fact, these, we're talking about charging these up at night, so there won't be any solar at that time. So we're down to wind, and very often at night, the wind does fall off, so. Oh, the classic, the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. But you know, renewable power takes on many forms, such as hydro, battery storage, and more. Plus, many EV owners actually charge at home for free with solar power. I don't think coal is bad. Uh, yes it is, and maybe, just maybe, a little bit of prep next time. It's got lovely BTUs, it's got lovely Very energy value. Not, yeah. How do you burn it more cleanly? Stop, stop, please, just stop. I mean, do you see natural gas getting bashed? For the love of God, natural gas is a fossil fuel, and huh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll come back to this. Well, we will be delivering power based on natural gas very shortly. And even with that, uh, that mix, we intend to use biofuels if we can. Oh, the envir environmental groups are extremely supportive. Gibbs does this a lot in this documentary, taking sound bites from people he's interviewed and portraying them as actual facts. Even a first year film student knows to cut to an expert who actually has both credibility, knowledge and expertise on the subject at hand. 
but instead he puts in these opinions half-truths, and, well, just sometimes outright lies. We did install the state's largest solar array at my company, the Board of Water and Light. Although the efficiency of these panels is only about just under 8%. Wait, less than 10% efficiency? When were these things manufactured? In the 70s? Typical solar panels these days range between 17 and 25% efficiency rating, all the way up to 50% plus. If you happen to be NASA and you happen to own a rover running around Mars, they have very efficient panels. But we can't afford those at about a million dollars a square inch. A million dollars a square inch? Really? We can meet the energy requirements for 10 homes. Wait, so those 824 solar panels producing 150 kilowatts of power can only provide enough energy for 10 homes in a year? These things really are ancient. If you wanted to make all of the energy required for the city of Lansing over a year, well, how about you'd have uh, a, a solar array that was three miles by five miles. Right. Fifteen square miles? Try 1.5. That's if they actually used a Daydream solar farm located in northern Queensland, which produces 398,000 megawatt hours of energy per year to 55,000 homes, which is 7,000 more homes than in Lansing, America. But We're not going to do that. Yeah. With that tiny thing, agreed. How long are these uh, towers supposed to last? 20, 20 something years. Wind turbines, like all power sources, have a limited lifespan. Sure, 20, 25 years, 30, some have been going even longer. But when they actually get to the end of their life, they can be replaced, either bit by bit or in whole. Does anybody consider that this is mountaintop removal for wind instead of coal? Yeah, and we've even had people say, if you can do mountaintop removal in Kentucky and West Virginia for coal, then it's about time that the rest of the country shared in the mountaintop removal too. There's mountaintop removal and there's mountaintop removal. This is the Appalachian open cut coal mine. And well, you can see the difference. thing is, is you've got to have a fossil fuel power plant backing it up and idling 100% of the time. Um, no they don't, they never have, and they never will. Because if you cycle up or cycle down as, as the demand on the wind comes through, then you actually generate a bigger carbon footprint than if you just ran it straight. Only nuclear runs at a relatively stable level, but even that cycles up and down. Let's just say the wind stopped right now just stop for an hour. You've got to have that power. This is a bit where Gibbs should fade to black and do a somber voiceover and say, the stark reality is, is that coal and gas fire stations take at least half an hour to an hour to spin up. Whereas battery storage and hydro take milliseconds to just seconds. I'm against our addiction to fossil fuels and have long been a fan of green energy. Yet, here we all are, critiquing your movie, whilst you purposely ignore fossil fuels, as well as many other renewable energy sources. Where do you get the hydrogen from? The hydrogen, that's the, the, that's the, the hydrogen is sourced from any hydrocarbon material. So, uh, you can get it from natural gas, you can get it from any petroleum or oil-based product. Material. Did Gibbs just cut this guy off? Because, in addition to getting hydrogen fuel from like natural gas, diesel, renewable liquid fuels, gasified coal, gasified biomass, and well, many others, there's an important one here that he didn't mention, and that is through water. Yes, electrolysis can produce hydrogen, and you can do that 100% renewably powered. We've got billions of dollars being spent, and green energy is not even replacing fossil fuels. They don't even know that that's a question. Classic misdirect using unsupported conclusions to try to substantiate a claim. There are already seven countries that are already at or very near to 100% renewable power, and they are Iceland, Paraguay, Costa Rica, Norway, followed very closely by Austria and Brazil and Denmark. Heck, most days Tasmania is running on 100%. One of the most dangerous things right now is the illusion that alternative technologies like wind and solar are somehow different from fossil fuels. Wow, what a ballsy statement to say that renewable power is no better than coal or other fossil fuel industries. Jeez, wonder what this guy's got to sell. Ozzy Zena says that solar cells and wind turbines have become fetishes and spectacles that do nothing to offset coal use. Mmm, I think the data disagrees with that. 
He's also criticised electric cars as inventions that are no better for the environment than gasoline-powered vehicles. And boy, oh boy, don't you worry, we're going to get to that. Ozzy Zenner said it was an illusion that renewables were replacing coal or any fossil fuel. After a few minutes of show and tell, Zenner proudly shows off his collection of fossil fuels and how they are used in solar cells. And then Gibbs reiterates that renewables are not offsetting fossil fuel industries. But what neither is saying are two important things. First, you can't get electricity without some materials. And neither has mentioned that all the methods of renewable power, especially wind, are the cleanest form of energy production you can get. That's the total lifetime from manufacture running through to ultimate retirement. This chart shows carbon dioxide output for all forms of energy. Notice how little CO2 is produced by solar and wind, especially when compared to coal. Create cleaner energy, solar, wind, and natural gas. This just in, natural gas is actually a fossil fuel. Oh, and it's actually 34 times stronger than CO2 at trapping heat over a 100 year period. When I looked up how much battery storage there is, it was less than one tenth of 1% of what's needed. This is a fantastic misleading pie chart, which is total garbage because battery storage should not equal 100% of total energy use. Oh, and side note, the International Energy Agency doesn't actually use BTUs in their measurements, so where did you get this from again? The whole thing is built using fossil fuel infrastructure, from the concrete, to the steel, to the mirrors, to the backing on the mirrors. Oh boy, he's back. The sun is renewable, but the solar arrays are not. And so by your logic, no form of power generation is renewable. Coal, nuclear, hydro. And Zenit is purposely misdirecting you here. The definition of renewable is something that can be replaced or regrown in a person's lifetime. And, spoiler alert, solar panels can be 100% recycled. Oh, come on. There's got to be something renewable. So, Glass is renewable. <laughs> Glass is not renewable. Iron's renewable. <laughs> Aluminum, that's renewable. I recycle my, my pop can, soda cans. I know it's renewable. Ooh, hashtag awkward. Yeah, the problem with all of these materials is that it takes an incredible amount of energy to mine and process all of the materials that go into building something like this. You use more fossil fuels to do this, then you're getting benefit from it. You would have been better off just yeah. burning the fossil fuels in the first place instead of playing pretend. Holy heck, dude. Which fossil fuel company is paying you to say that? Only a small fraction of their energy actually comes from wind and solar. Uh, when was this thing made? Because in the last five years, power production in Germany has seen renewables surpass nuclear, hard coal, gas, and other forms of electricity production. Through a combination of geothermal, wind, and solar, it will produce all the energy that it needs. But in fact, it has lines connecting it to the same electrical grid that we're all connected to. Energy mix is complex, and it might be made of wind, hydro, and many more forms of power. Not to mention the fact that organizations such as Tesla offset their emissions. Tesla's electric cars are built with aluminum, which uses eight times more energy to manufacture than steel. Curious how doesn't talk about the many other car makers who actually use aluminum, such as Mercedes-Benz, Jaguar, Ford, and many others. And they did chop down a forest to put up solar panels near their North Carolina plant, but they didn't disconnect from the grid. If you're fortunate to have enough solar to be able to provide not only power to your place, but also to other people by connecting to the grid, isn't that a good thing? Despite all the claims, I haven't found a single entity anywhere in the world that's running on 100% solar and wind alone. There are many forms of renewable power, not just solar and wind. And to suggest there is not one entity in the entire world running on 100% renewable power is just wrong. Iceland, you're doing okay, aren't you? This absolutely cannot extend civilization's life. This relies on the most toxic and industrial processes that we've ever created. People are living close to coal-fired power plants, roads, and other forms of pollution would disagree with you there. Apologies in advance, photosensitivity warning coming. Gibbs purposely chose some manic, crazy fast footage to demonstrate how solar panels and wind turbines use these materials. And electric cars too. But, oh, hang on, they're also in many things that you and I use every day. So let's do this, shall we? Because nuclear power plants, coal power plants, 
gas power plants, fracking stations, diesel fuel, solvents, bicycle tyres, motorcycle helmets, dashboards, dyes, life jackets, TV cabinets, rubbing alcohol, electrician's tape, oil filters, perfumes, makeup, ballpoint pens, full wax, speakers, non grip, shampoo, pack rollers, shampoo, safety glasses, footballs, fishing rods, cement, steel, buildings, golf balls, cereals, seeds, cameras, dresses, DVDs, housemates, subdishes, mock colors, toilets, antiseptics, candles, balloons, crayons, your roof, drinking cups, toothpaste, parachutes, your car, the bus you travel on, the station, the railway tracks, essentially. These materials that he's presenting to you here are in almost anything and everything that we have in our lives. Then Ozzy and I discovered that the giant solar arrays had been raised to the ground. Oh my god. I mean, this was huge. Ooh, I can relate to this one. You publish something online and people look at it several years later and they say, hey, there is actually stuff in there. What are you on about? It suddenly dawned on me what we were looking at. A solar dead zone. Yep, no sun to be seen here, folks. These giant solar and wind technology installations may last only a few decades. Almost all power sources have a finite lifespan. But you know the standout here? Hydropower. Yeah, more than 100 years this thing's been going. These wind turbines, built in 1987 in Hawaii, were removed in 2012. It turns out that the biggest source of green energy in Vermont is something called biomass. Where does this guy get his facts from? With just five minutes of research, I discovered that the US Energy Information Administration states that Vermont's in-state electricity generation was comprised of 20% biomass, 20% renewables, and 60% hydroelectric, which predominantly comes from Canada. Biomass, especially when you add in biofuels, is by far the largest portion of green energy around the world even in Germany, source of the solar miracle. Let's all agree, he should shoot his research team because, again, data internationally says that biomass only makes up about 9% of our energy mix, and from Germany, it's less than that. So where are they pulling this almost 70% from? The only reason we've been force-fed the story, climate change plus renewables equals worse saved, is because billionaires, bankers, and corporations profit from it. Oh man, I'm starting to think that no one is safe in this. No matter what you will sell, he will have a go at you. So, imagine if I was to sell bicycles. I'd be considered a monster. What, for being able to feed my family? Well, I have cleared up many of the inaccuracies, omissions, and, well, straw man tactics used by Gibbs. Whilst some good, valid points are made about how some corporations are making themselves out to be clean and green, but are in fact actually polluting the planet, looking at you BP fuel, and how chopping down trees and plants to make fuel is incredibly stupid and not renewable, not to mention taking away precious land and water for crops, and that some public figures and organisations are promoting clean energy, but not doing due diligence around what sponsorship might look like from the likes of the Koch brothers or maybe fossil fuel industries, because it not only hurts them, but everyone's trust in them, and that we all need to stop thinking of the earth as a limitless resource. No, unfortunately, this video has done a lot of harm and filled many climate deniers with information that is grossly inaccurate, lacks exploration, and perpetuates a lot of lies around renewables, EVs, and climate action. Whilst I don't want to get into the overpopulation and water scarcity bit, this sin count is bad. Very bad. I'm disappointed that this was released on Earth Day where the world over we should all be thinking about how we can use less, recycle more, invest in truly renewable technologies and improve the air that we all breathe. Instead, Gibbs threw EVs, renewables and decarbonisation away with the bathwater. Yep, his take on these complex subjects was not well informed with an obvious lack of energy experts, old outdated footage and facts and a poor assemblance of an argument. Maybe it wasn't Ralph who wrote this, but maybe Andrew Bolt? Maybe? Just maybe? No, for someone who spent more than a decade assembling a movie, he failed to keep up and include important discussions around the impact of coal, gas and fossil fuels and how they have an effect on our health. How renewable technology is working in many countries. That organisations are not only going to neutralise their carbon emissions 
through like renewable power, but also they're buying up forest and land and they're going to be planting trees and they're going to recapture their lifetime emissions and go negative. Yeah, look to Microsoft as an example. So to say that if you're connected to the grid, you're not using renewable power, well, sure, depends where you live. As I stated already, those that live in Iceland, I've got 100% renewable power 100% of the time. Heck, Tasmania does it all the time, well, most of the time. But the point is this, is that it's very possible and that the challenges, whilst great, they're not impossible. No, what Gibbs is suggesting is that we should all just do nothing, keeping the fossil fuel status quo and leaving you with like an existential doomsday, depressing movie that offers no hope. My rating, 1 out of 10. Don't even bother watching it. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little rant there. Now, please note, I normally do not do reviews. I know, I cover renewables like batteries, solar, wind, electric vehicles, and well more. And if you wanna hear about some Australian content, things that are happening in the world and how these are all improving our lives and getting the world to a clean and greener place, please do subscribe, it supports the channel. If you want to take it to the next level, join these awesome individuals over here like Ashley Hill, Tessa Nagong, Ray Johnson, and Nigel Farrier, who, uh, many others, uh, with me on Patreon and they got early access, polls, news, stuff that you just don't get here. And hey, if you can do something, get out there, share the important, the correct messaging that should actually be in this movie, which isn't. So I do hope that one, people stop watching it, and two, you be good and you be green.